What'd you think about Tanahashi's 10 point plan? Um, I thought it was amazing and interesting that he did it because nobody else has ever done that. Because number one, when you do that, you're telling the public that, uh, we are not hot and we have, to, we were looking to grow. And even when you're not, nobody ever admits that. So I thought that just the fact that they did it, that he did that was, um, pretty impressive. Um, I mean, as far as his points, you know, very interesting. Um, as far as actually implementing them and seeing what happens with the company, totally different story, you know. And they've got a tough, they've got a tough road ahead of them too. Um, and they don't have, they don't have the big TV cushion that that AEW may end up having. Um, and they are, you know, I mean, it's it's sort of sad to me because New Japan was always a powerhouse, and and from. You know, that period from like, what I don't know, it was 2016, 2017 to about 2020, right before the pandemic. I mean, they were a real powerhouse, great, great shows, fantastic wrestlers, all those great matches, you know, things like that. Including now, being ahead of the curve on American wrestling. Very much so. Very much so. Yeah. And now they're not even ahead of the curve in, in Japan. They're, I mean, they're the number one group, but nobody's hot there right now and um they're you know and the guys who are the hottest you know i mean like okada and will and they're both gone and you know tanahashi's there but it's like you know i mean he he's he's you know he's is physically he's he's in that mid-card level i mean even though i know he can do a good match when he's called on to do a good match he can't be the guy to carry the company anymore but they don't really have that guy you know um I was hoping it would be Yoda Suji. Maybe it still can be, um, but but it, it but Yoda Suji hasn't been that guy so far, and it's not just the booking. He just hasn't. Um, the hottest guy's Naito, um, and Naito's in rough shape physically, so yeah. it's a tough thing. He's got, you know, Jeff Cobb is great. Ishii's great. They got guys that are great there, but they don't have that. You know, Shingo Takagi's fantastic, but they don't have that marquee star that you need to have a when you have a to, to have a really hot promotion all right there's some stories in the observer that i was going to bring up but i think we'll hit questions first and if we have more time then then we'll discuss the, the last i just want to talk i'll talk a uh, signal also real quick oh go ahead oh, okay all right yeah yeah i mean like you know the el signo passed away on um wednesday and I mean, I remember him from when I was very young, when he came to California, you know, El Signo, El Tejano and Negro Navarro, they were called the death missionaries, um, Los Misioneros de la Muerte on, uh, in California. And, um, those guys were dynamite, man. I, you know, I had heard of them, but they were not, this was before they became, they really became big stars. Well, really right at that time, but, but at that time. I wasn't really that closely following Mexican wrestling at all. I was probably not following it at all. I think other than I got the Japanese magazines and I would see pictures and everything. Um, so I kind of knew who the guys that were being pushed were, but, but I wasn't watching it. And those guys came in and, and they were so quick and so good. And, um, you know, they went to Japan and wrestled tiger mask and Hamada and Hoshino and those guys on one of those tours and they were dynamite there. And then, there was a show in Japan. This show, this TV show was awesome. It was in the early 80s. It was called World Pro Wrestling. And it was on um, Channel 12, I believe. Um, Tokyo TV, TV Tokyo, whatever, whatever the station was. Um, and it'd be a one-hour show every week in prime time. And it would air matches from all over the world, from outside of Japan. So you would get like, you know, get Ric Flair and Kerry Von Erich. What, what they would do is they would pay for, you know, like whether it was the St. You know, St. Louis promotion or Charlotte or Florida or AWA or UWA. It was usually UWA, the Mexican stuff. I don't think, I don't remember seeing EMLL stuff. It was UWA stuff from the Toreo usually. Um, and that, and that was new Japan's partners, but they focused on, you know, they always focused on, you know, Brody Hanson, road warriors, Ric Flair, um, Bruiser Brody, you know, um, Hanson, Harley race, 
the Von Erics, the guys, the guys that um, you know were known in Japan and were stars and everything. Some Rick Martel, um, Ricky Steamboat, you know, Rock and Roll Midnight, um, and you would just see the most awesome matches. And they would put, you know, the um, Los Misioneros de la Muerte six man tags against, um, oh, you know, the Los Fantasticos, Kato Kung Lee, Kung Fu, and um, oh, what was the third guy? Um, um, Kato Kung Lee and um, Oh God, Kendo, Kendo star. And these matches were so much fun and they were so good. I really was a, a big fan of those guys. I mean, it was, and the, the thing was, is like they're, it was, it was, um, you know, like, I mean, they look, they changed the game there. You know, the, the most of the main events or a lot of the main events were tags, not trios. And the trios would just be, yeah, but three star heels and three star baby faces on, you know, this week. And, you know, if we do a feud, maybe whatever, but there weren't really what you would call trios like we had with the Freebirds in the United States or something like that. And the first real big ones were um, Los Misioneros and the Brazos. You know, were also when they were young, they were really good too. I mean, Brazo de Plata was before he got heavy and became a comedy wrestler. That guy could. That guy was great. Um, and you know, Signo was a a, a really strong worker. Um, and before he got heavy. You know, um, and if you saw him like later in his career, you'd go like, well, what was the big deal of this guy? But but I mean, I saw him in his prime. He was he was really good. It was a golden age. I mean, when I would when when the, the trail matches would air on Japanese TV, it's like there's 15,000, 18,000 people there. They're going crazy. The matches are awesome. I mean, it was it was like a golden era. And they were, a, you know, I mean, all those guys from that era. You know, when I look at those results and, and everything like that, El Solitario and Wagner, the, the father of this, of the Dr. Wagner Jr. Um, 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 you know, that, that first, that 80s generation, Noma Oscaris, Dos Caras, Kanek, um, Negro Casas, Santo Jr. Um, just that whole crew, you'd have like, like a five, six match show and everybody was great. And they were all like main eventers. You know, it was like, the opening match guys were they were opening match guys but they they worked like the smaller it was like smaller guys than up and so um these guys were smaller guys but they got so big that 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 um so hot because of you know the timing of the santo thing so so what happened was in um 81 you know it was um there's a tag match and santo had a heart attack in the match with those guys and nearly died you know uh hurricane ramirez gave him the cpr saved him they saved him he went he had an operation and you know the storyline was that uh they the the promotion and the magazines went with it and and it was a very magazine oriented culture because they had 12 weekly wrestling magazines that were all over the country and people read them and everything and wrestling wasn't really there was tv in some places but not in mexico city and that's where the big money was or the big houses were. So it was a magazine reading culture and news and also the newspapers covered it, sports papers. So these guys that were the heels in this match where Santo has the heart attack, you know, they create this image that these were, you know, because Santo was already a big movie star and he would fight these aliens and, you know, Frankensteins and, you know, whatever all these supernatural creatures so they tried to make these guys into the death missionaries those you know and and the idea was is they were sent to earth to bring santo back and take him away from us you know to kill him essentially and they got so much heat you know and they were drawn these big crowds as main eventers after this and then after a while it was just hey these guys are great i mean people even you know you know after you know after some time um, you know, by 83, even though they were, they were Rudos, they were cheered, you know, because people just thought they were great, but it was a really, um, I mean, it was a big, big boom period. And he was, you know, the, the, the trio was really part of it. They changed the game in Mexico. I mean, you watch those Lucha Libre shows now, and there's always the trios main events and there's the trios, um, you know, the different trios factions that are there. And it all comes from, you know, the, the, those Misioneros and the Brazos, both of them really. But, um, yeah, I mean, um, so it's very sad. You know, he passed away at the age of 69. Um, but, you know, Hall of Famer and legitimate, you know, I mean, for years and years and years, it was hard to get, um, you know, to get the votes, to get them in. But those of us who, like, 
followed that period i mean we you know it's like they deserve to be in and um so um you know and then you know he was around for long 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 past his prime um you know and just you know beat up and slower and all that and um but but the prime el signo and those guys i mean was, they were a revolutionary force in pro wrestling thank you for watching make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button and you'll never miss a video again